Here is a pair of chickens. And this is their waterer. Here's what that waterer looks like within a few hours of being totally cleaned. Gross. After pecking at the dirt all day, they like to use a dish as a sink to wash their beaks, which means that I have to clean their water more frequently than I'd like. I've settled on using this type of water because, quite simply, it's been the most reliable one I've tried. I had the cup and nipple cell waters previously, and they have a tendency to get stuck and leak, which is a deal breaker. Apart from needing frequent cleaning, this water bowl has been a good option, but things can always be better. This is the future after all. We have self-driving cars, so why not a self-cleaning water bowl? Since I couldn't find anything like this on the market, I thought I'd take a shot at making one myself. My goals for this improved waterer are to be as reliable as the current gravity waterer and to perform cleaning cycles automatically. This is my first concept. I'm not totally sold on it. I think there's a few things that can be improved, but let me show you how it works. Conceptually, it's similar to a toilet. At the top sits a tank of water. This solenoid is used to release water to the bowl, which is where the birds will drink from. This is the bowl. It's a conical 3D printed part that's normally going to be filled with water. It has two small holes for filling and rinsing, two medium holes for overflow protection, and one big drain hole at the bottom. At the base of the bowl is another solenoid valve, which will periodically open to flush all of the water and dirt somewhere far away. This solenoid actually doesn't work for gravity feed systems. It needs about 3 psi of water pressure to open, so you'll notice that I swapped it out for a different model in the following clips. The bowl section mounts to the wall on a dovetail joint and can be removed for deep cleaning when needed. The bowl's overflow is connected to the solenoid's outlet using clear tubing at the back. To check how it works, I poured in dirt from the current water bowl and tried to run a few clean cycles where it drains and fills the bowl. This is where it started to go wrong. Although it did work some of the time, I found that it didn't take much dirt to get the solenoid valve stuck open. It wasn't even anything too big, like leaves or rocks. The solenoid just doesn't do well with debris. So I'm going to need to redesign how this thing drains, and I've got two ideas. Before I got solenoid valves, I did some tests with the regular ball valve. It worked great. It never had any issues with debris. I could connect the handle of a normal ball valve to a gear reduction motor and make my own electric valve. One that would be a little bit more robust. The second idea is to get rid of the drain valve entirely and use a trap, just like a toilet. I like this option because it uses less parts and simplifies the design. Each idea has its own advantages and drawbacks. For the motorized ball valve option, I think one of the biggest positives is that the straight down path for dirt will give the least chance of clogging. And since this option uses two separate solenoids, I can independently control when filling and draining occur. This way, I can do things like fill the bowl up completely before draining it, or open both solenoids at the same time. Basically, whatever sequence I find cleans the best. The downside is that this option either requires that I design and build a motorized ball valve or purchase one, and put together a system to control it. Overall, this option has a lot more parts and is more complicated. The big draw of going down the toilet flush design option is that I can eliminate the bottom solenoid and all its related complexity. That being said, I feel like getting debris to reliably flush and not clog the trap at the bottom is not that simple. The water entering the bowl probably needs to be at a higher flow rate and the nozzle probably needs to be designed a certain way. There's also much less control over how the flush happens once the parts are made. I've been thinking about it for a bit and at the time of making this video, I'm still not sure which way I'll go. I'm excited about the next iteration of this concept, and once I test it, I'll make a video about it. In the meantime, I'll just have to continue washing the water bowl by hand. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned.